This morning, I'm going to tell you about synthetic media, text to everything, AI systems, and the metaverse. And what happened, I got a call from the organization, and they said, Jarno, please take this crowd 15 years from now. Please have a look into the future with this public, with this crowd. So what I did, two weeks ago, I went to my office, took my crystal ball, looked inside the future 15 years from now, and I'm going to take you back uh, into the future, November 2nd, 15 years from now, the year 2037. So this day, 15 years from now, Elon Musk is an old man, and he is now the president of the United States. On this day, 15 years from now, he will have a meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, Seward van Linden. <laughs> and 15 years from now, as I have seen in my crystal ball, Mark Zuckerberg is explaining to his stakeholders why he sold his company Meta to ByteDance TikTok. 15 years from now, nobody will remember who Gary V even is. He's now selling toys in the streets of New York. We will all be using Dogecoin. And finally, the Grammarly advertising has stopped on YouTube. <laughs> all jokes aside, my name is Jarno Duursma. I write books about digital technology, articles. I create a podcast, Listening to the Future. Write a newsletter, Trending in Tech, and that is what I do. So the recurring theme in the past 12 years has been the merging between the digital and the physical world. That is the, th the theme. So I wrote books about AI, uh, synthetic media already in 2019. You can download all my books from my website if you would like. So this merging between the digital and the physical is what interests me the most. And a small example, we all have this external brain. As we sit here, we all have this external brain. So please raise your hand if in the past 30 days, you sent yourself an email on your smartphone to remind you something. Okay, which of you in the past 30 days took a picture of something to create a reminder for yourself? Please raise your hand. Okay, and which of you in the past 30 days took a screenshot of something to Remember something, please raise your hand. Okay. There's this one guy never raising his hand. I'm just wondering why. So the interesting part is where AI systems are taking over human skills, human capabilities. When we talk about this merging, right? This melting together of human and software, taking over human skills. Human skills like seeing or hearing or talking, even some form of emotional recognition, creativity. AI systems are capable of taking over, augmenting, empowering human capabilities like vision. So once again, the recurring theme is the, the merging between the digital and the physical. That is the recurring uh, theme. Also, the listening part. Which of you know what Shazam is? Please raise your hand. Yes, okay. So the organization asked me to make it a, an interactive uh, talk. So this was the interactive part. If you receive an evaluation of my lecture and it asks if it was interactive, this was the interactive part. AI systems are capable of listening and talking. I understand that's a simple form, but you know where we are going. So in the next chapter, I think one of the most interesting parts of AI software is the creativity, where AI systems are trying to help us with our creativity, and they create synthetic media. So synthetic media is all the media that has been created with the help of AI software. So it can be like uh, images, uh, video, text, or audio. We all know the website, this person does not exist. There's also this flower vase that do does not exist. It's all been created by AI software. New perspectives, new insights, new ideas, new angles 
are being fed by these machines. This sneaker does not exist. New perspectives, new insights, new ideas. So in 2019, I wrote my report, Machines with Imagination, and now is the time that AI software is feeding us with new ideas. An infinite amount of ideas, new text, new audio, new image, etc. So it's really what a fun time to be alive. But this also raises the question, of course, what is real and what is fake? If AI systems can create content that is indistinguishable from real life, the digital, what is real and what is fake? Can we believe our ears? Can we believe our eyes when we see synthetic media? That is the question. The second technological development I want to share with you is text to everything. And text to everything is where we have this, this this landscape of synthetic media, and you can uh, talk to these systems just with a natural description, just with a prompt, you know, just with a, a simple explanation of what you want to see, what you want to hear, what you want to read, etc. Text to everything combined with synthetic media. Small example is this text to text. This is a website called Writer. You can feed the system with six bullet points, and these six bullet points, you describe what you want to uh, tell in an email. You write six bullet points, you uh, push a button uh, with the word generate, and you receive, as you can see on the, on the right, you receive three possibilities of an email. So there's no need, no more, to think about what's, uh, to write a complete email. It's just six bullet points, push a button, and uh, you can see the result. Uh, this is copy.ai, you also have Jasper AI, you have all kinds of system, you feed it with a natural description with a little bit of text, and the AI system can create output. So what I did, I fed a system with just a title, I fed it with a small paragraph, I pushed a button, and an infinite amount of paragraphs, people are taking pictures, you can have every uh, URL, every hyperlink at the end, just chill, just listen and focus. So when you have a small writer's block, you just push a button and you will be fed with a new paragraph, just with new insights, just with a new perspective. Um, and that is just what software can do. Synthetic media, text to everything. So you must have been sleeping under a rock to miss this trend, right? The text to image, the dull E. You give a software system a small prompt, a natural description, and it just uh, gives you a lot of visual input. In this case, a human and a robot merging into one cypherpunk style. That is what you feed the machine, and you get four suggestions. And you can edit, and you can make variation, new perspectives, new angles, new insights, an infinite amount of ideas. We're going to work together with software in this chapter of human skills called creativity. A photo of a teddy bear walking in the Netherlands, digital art, realistic photo. This is what software is creating. And the guys at Mattel from Hot Wheels, they are using this kind of software to design new models for their Hot Wheels. Also, architects, fashion brands are using this kind of software to come with up with new ideas, new perspectives, new insights. It is the machines with imagination. So next up will be the jobs of people as a prompt engineer who can write the perfect prompt for this kind of software. Next up is synthetic media and cover image. So you paste your blog into this website, Stock AI. You paste your blog uh, uh, in, the, in the lower part. You push a button, you wait 20 seconds, and you have a cover art image for your blog. How fantastic would it be if it would be integrated into WordPress system? We had text to image, we had text to text, and now we have text to audio. You give us a, a software system, a description of what you want to hear, and this is what it produces. Text to audio. Next up is voice cloning, of course. 
Last year, I had my voice cloned. So now with a, a, a computer keyboard, I can, I can uh, have my voice say anything that I'd like. Just push a button, write something, push a button. Six seconds later, I have my own cloned voice. In this example, I'll tell something about Facebook and the metaverse. Facebook said on Monday, it will start publishing the financial results of its augmented and virtual reality labs as a separate unit. The financial commitment to this hardware-focused unit has everything to do with Facebook's metaverse ambitions. The company all Voice cloning technology, synthetic media. Uh, which of you has heard the Steve Jobs podcast? Please raise your hand. So I can see. Oh, just five people. So, um, Steve Jobs is dead. He is deceased. Uh, and they created a new podcast uh, with Joe Rogan. So they cloned the voice of Joe Rogan, they cloned the voice of G Steve Jobs, and they put out a new podcast. <laughs> so without further ado, my friend who is difficult to describe and wonderful, and I'm so grateful he this came This is Joe on the Rogan. Show. How's it going? Good to see you, buddy. It's been a long time since I've been on the show. I've missed this. It's always fun. How's it going? Come on, tell me about Jobs. <laughs> It's always good to see you, buddy. I'm so happy you came on, man. Yeah, it's great to be on the show. Your audience is just so different from your normal Apple users, and that's a good thing. It's cool. So how interesting would it be if deceased artists would return and create full new music, right? A new album or, or rap or poetry or whatever with voice cloning technology. And we will see a coming wave where uh, famous people will deepfake, will voice clone their voice and uh, will use for audi audio, commercial or for podcasting, uh, etc. So the voice cloning is next up. This is uh, Freddie Mercury singing in Korean. Come on, head, don't get shot Kiss somebody, baby, Yeah, so Freddie Mercury was a very famous uh, singer in the past century. His band called Queen. I'm just trying to relate to the younger people in the room. For every generation, my talk is, uh, is uh, suitable. So next up is when you have an audiobook or a podcast that the cover art, the images, are being automatically created by AI software. So we have text-to-text, -text, we have text-to-image, we have uh, text to audio, but we also have text to video. This, this is a box, a magical box. This box can make any idea real. So like I said, the interesting part is you do text to everything. Natural language, no code, text to audio, text to video, text to image, etc. Synthetic media, machines with imagination. This. So next up is the metaverse. So in the beginning of my talk, I said I'm interested by the merging of the digital and the physical world. This is some sort of end point, right? Where we digitize our world in the virtual world and we digitize ourselves as an avatar. So the metaverse, for those who've been uh, uh, living on the planet Mars in the couple of years, in the last years, the metaverse is this future vision of interconnected worlds, uh, 3D uh, uh, worlds, a 3D version of the internet, persistent, real-time, interoperability between different virtual worlds, a 3D form of the current internet. That is what the metaverse should be when it's completed. It's not completed as it is, but uh, uh, companies are working towards this concept of the metaverse, different virtual worlds, interconnected, interoperability. And why are companies so enthusiastic about this concept of the metaverse? It's because it's the next platform, right? We have the smartphone, we have the PC laptop, and now we have this concept of the three-dimensional world, the virtual three-dimensional uh, world, where you can do some gaming, you can buy retail stuff, you can do some sports, you, they can sell you digital 
collectibles, they can sell you NFTs or clothing for your avatar, uh, uh, you, to name a few. So uh, that is the concept of the metaverse. It's a rather abstract concept. So also for the older generation, I created an example from a long time ago. It's like a, a world, a physical world, and then you have this mirror world that is not real, but it looks a little bit like if it's real, and you can go from one world into the other, and it feels real, but yet it is uh, difficult. The metaverse will be the YouTube for the social experience. So what you do is you go from one world in the other, and then you get an idea from another suggestion, and you will go to a new virtual world. So the last part of my presentation is about the combination of these three technological trends that I have discussed. The metaverse, synthetic media, text to everything. So, Please have a focus and walk along as I try to describe what is going on. I think a couple of years from now, there will be this meta reality. And not the meta of the company, but in meta in a higher sense. So this meta reality where you'll be standing in your living room, in your pajamas, I don't care, with your VR goggles on and with this speech to text, text to everything, you will be able to create the world as you like. You can use your voice to create a landscape, a city, uh, moving parts, moving people, as we have seen with text to video. So with voice commands, you can create this world around you in your virtual reality with sound, with images, uh, with, with video, etc. So will you will be the god of your own uh, 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 world, the center of your own world. And for the uh, people in the room, a lot of my slides indeed have been created by DAL-E, as you can uh, see. So next up is that you can put your VR goggles on in the future and you can describe a vacation. You will go to the beach with the sound of the waves and the sound of the birds and you can create every vacation location that you would like. So we can go into this meta reality, this upper reality layer where we can go to and only your imagination is your limit. So the 1.0 version of this concept is being done by a company called Promethean. Promethean, build me a modern downtown office. Load nature background. Load downtown background. Color the wall red. Snap to the wall. Center the picture frame on the couch. So this is the interesting part. So where you use voice commands and then text to everything, a powerful AI system will help us to generate this world around us, a simulation of the real world, but with no boundaries in the physical, right? So you can make yourself very tall, you can go everywhere you'd uh, like. If you'd like to spend a day flying around like a butterfly, uh, you can. So also for the disabled people, if to, they want to visualize themselves as um, in a movie where they are running, it is possible, right? So imagine, I know that it is, it, is, it is somewhat speculative, right? What I'm telling you, it is a little bit speculative, but I think in a couple of years it will be possible when the AI systems are more powerful and more capable of creating synthetic media. So imagine you have this 11-year-old girl, she wants to be an astronaut and she can visualize herself as being an astronaut in this what I call a meta-reality, where synthetic media is so good and the AI is so powerful that we can create a world around us. So how interesting would that be? You can play with time, you can play with reality, you can go from the past into the future, whatever you like, whenever you like. I can even transport myself to the late 70s, beginning of the 80s, in my childhood home, 
that I know very well. I can describe it to the AI system in the future and I can observe myself as a young boy in the beginning of the 80s in my childhood home and I can observe myself and I can, maybe I can see what I was doing back then. So only your imagination is the limit in this one when the AI systems are powerful enough and the synthetic media is good enough to create a realistic surrounding. I'm closing with a couple of difficult questions. So the first difficult question is, please raise your hand if in the past 30 days you have been to VR chat, Decentraland or Crypto Voxels. Please raise your hand. So that's my point. I saw four people raising their hand. That's not enough. If this concept of the metaverse is going to be huge and big and the next phase of the internet, well, clearly it hasn't enough benefit or the UX or people are just not understanding what the concept can be. Which of you, please raise your hand, has VR goggles at home? Okay, uh, please hold your hand up, please hold your hand up, take a look around. And this is on a, a tech means business conference, right? Just, I think maybe 15% of the people, you can lower your hand, thank you very much. We had, a long time ago, we had Second Life and corporates start building their offices there, right, their shops. But it kind of failed, so I understand that things are different now, technology is better, we have good access to the internet, etc., so I understand. But maybe we're not, we're not just that fond of, of these virtual worlds, or maybe not yet. And I think we have to ask some critical questions about big tech entering this metaverse concept, right? Because I wrote a book in 2012 about social media. I was very enthusiastic about the concept of social media. I was naive thinking that social media would change the world for the better, that uh, gaining insights from one another would be the main benefit of social media. Boy, was I wrong. I was naive, I was optimistic. So we must prevent that the only thing that is uh, rela uh, relatable now is this optimism. So I think we can be critical about the concept. We must prevent that there will be some corporate metaverse with the only goal is to steal your data, sell you digital stuff that you don't want to have, and, uh, and, and steal your biometrics uh, also along the way. So another difficult question is that, as you can see in chronological order, as you can see, analog, social media, deepfake, metaverse, as you can see, uh, we're getting more disconnected, more detached from our physical analog self by maintaining in the digital world for so long. So we must prevent that we as a human species are detaching ourselves from our physical body, you know, where, the, where, the, the, where, where your senses are, where your emotions are, and we must prevent uh, uh, wandering off in the digital world for too long. Also, because in the physical world, we have our problems, right? We have poverty, we have climate change, and we have war. So why would we spend all these billions of dollars on this metaverse concept whilst in the physical world there are current problems? And not only current problems, this was in July this summer. I was sitting on a bench in the proximity of the city of Groningen. I'm not going to tell you where this is because I don't want you to go there. It's just my space. And I was sitting there and I could hear the sheep. They were eating the grass. I could hear the sound the sheep were making. I could hear the wind and the sun on my skin and the wind in my hair. And I could hear the river, uh, the sound of the river in the back. And it, it was just such a perfect moment because everything was synchronized. I was so in the here and now in this physical world, and I knew at that point for sure there will be no digital world that can copy this feeling of being in the present, in the here and now, so interconnected in this physical world with nature, with all the elements, everything that I was sensing and everything that I was feeling. So as steps are taken towards building the metaverse, then we mustn't stop trying making the real world beautiful and exciting too. 
Thank you very much for your time and attention. If you'd like my URLs, my links, you can visit my website, you can scan the QR code, you can leave your email and it will be in your inbox. Once again, very much uh, thank you for your time and attention.